nice to meet everyone. So if you all haven't emptied out of here because I still use a BlackBerry, then uh, <laughs> I guess we'll have a good presentation. So my name's Justin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called lowestrates.ca. Essentially what we are is Expedia for personal finance. So what I'm going to do tonight is tell you a little bit of a story about how and why we launched lowestrates.ca and how I got here tonight and two of the big lessons that we learned along the way that hopefully you'll find interesting and helpful as you go through your journey. So lowestrates.ca, the genesis of the idea, started in the UK. I spent about 10 years working in the UK, and every time I turned on the TV or listened to the radio, all I heard were ads for rate comparison sites. Now, when you think of a rate comparison site in Canada or the US, you think of a site like Expedia or Trivago, where you can go and compare a flight or a hotel. But in the UK, people were comparing personal finance products. People were comparing the products that they spent most of their money on. Because if you think about it, where does most of your money go? It doesn't go to flights and hotels. It goes to mortgage interest. It goes to insurance. It goes to credit card debt. And in the UK, 70 70% of all personal financial transactions started on rate comparison sites. So you turned on the TV and you'd see commercials with Snoop Doggy Dog pushing sites called moneysupermarket.co.uk. You couldn't get away from them. So I thought to myself, okay, this, this is a thing. This makes sense. And when I moved back to Toronto, I realized this doesn't exist at all in Canada. And I had two personal experiences that really pushed me into starting something like this. My mortgage came up for renewal, and I was with one of the five big banks. I'm not gonna say which one, but give you a clue, there's signs for it all over this place. <laughs> <laughs> and my renewal came up, and lo and behold, they were gonna increase my mortgage rate, and it was gonna cost me $2,500 more per year. And I said to them, this doesn't seem fair. It's really expensive to get new clients, so shouldn't you be trying to keep clients by giving me at least the same rate or a better rate? And they said, sorry, Justin, you're a great client, but this is the best we can do. Believe me, there's nowhere else you're gonna get a better rate. And I said, okay, yeah, this seems like bullshit to me. So <laughs> what I did is I called up each of the other five major banks, and it was a pain in the ass. I had to pick up the phone and call each of them. And lo and behold, I was able to get a better rate. So I went back to my existing bank and I said, I got a better rate. I thought you told me nothing was available. And they said, oh, you know what? Something became available, we'll match it. <laughs> and I said to myself, this is, this is bullshit. It, like a mortgage shouldn't be like Future Shop. Remember when you had to go out to Future Shop and you wanted to buy something and you had to negotiate with the salesperson to try to save five bucks or 50 bucks on a DVD? You know, getting a mortgage, something as big as that, should not be like going to Future Shop, right? And then I had another situation, so car insurance. So I stayed with the same car insurance broker year after year after year, and I kept asking every year, I said, is this the best rate? And they said, yeah, yeah, this is the best rate. We shopped the market for you. So then one year, I shopped the market myself, and I saved 1000 bucks on my car insurance. So again, bullshit. So no one is out there in Canada doing this work for you. And so I thought to myself, hey, this doesn't exist in Canada. Canadians are wasting their money. And there's other countries in the world like the UK where this exists. Why don't we launch this? So in 2012, we launched lowestrates.ca. The only problem was my wife thought this was a stupid idea because, you know, where do people go in Canada when they're looking for mortgage or insurance? They go to the bank. That's just what everyone does. Or they stay with their insurance company because no one really understands personal finance. No one cares about it. No one knows that you can save money. So she said, Justin, you are not taking any of our money and putting this into it. So, you know, so, so I, I convinced her. I convinced her a little bit. So we started with $150,000. And we said, OK, if we lose this $150,000, then we got to go back and get a real job. And she said, mark my words, Justin, Canadians are always going to keep going to the big banks. They're going to continue to stay with their insurance companies. They're not going to compare this stuff just because they're not going to trust you. So we went out to you know, prove my wife wrong and to prove that, you know, what was happening in other industries in Canada, like the travel comparison, and what was happening in other countries like the UK could also happen in Canada. So we launched a rate comparison site for insurance, mortgage, credit cards, and loans. And two of the big lessons we learned along the way 
The first was, as I said, we bootstrapped it. What I found really interesting, what I find really interesting, is that a lot of companies in the fintech space brag about how much money they've raised. It's really cool to say, oh, this is how much money I've raised, and look how awesome my office is, and all of this great stuff. But what I don't hear a lot about is, okay, this is how much money my company makes, right? Because that's hard. And so we had to focus on, okay, how do we make money? Because when you bootstrap a company with $150,000, you have to make sure, one, do you have something that people want to buy, okay? And then two, how do you get people to find out about this? And then three, once they do find out about it, how do you make money? So I think anyone who is looking to start something up, they have to answer those questions before they think about, okay, how can I raise money? How can I get that cool office? How can I be in this fantastic FinTech space? And that seems like common sense, and all of you may be thinking, well, of course. But I think if you look at a lot of companies right now, there's a lot of companies that don't know how, they, how they're going to make money and how they're ever going to make money. And, I, and personally, I just I wasn't comfortable with starting a company like that. So we really had to think about, you know, how much can we charge for this product? How can we make money? And how can we get people to care about that? So I'd, I'd suggest that all of you in your businesses really, really think about that if you're looking to launch something before you do. And I'd encourage you to bootstrap I, if you can do so, because it's really hard at the beginning. I didn't pay myself for three years. I had to work at a desk, you know, sharing with a printer that was about this big. You know, we were in a literal basement with no windows. We called it the dungeon. And it wasn't sexy. It wasn't cool. You know, I had my head, you know, stuck in the sand for three years, basically. But guess what? You know, we slowly, slowly, slowly started to get that snowball going. And, you know, the one visitor a day turned to 10 visitors a day, turned to 100, turned to 100,000, turned to a million. And the way we did it, we decided we didn't have any money to advertise because we only started with $150,000. And if any of you have done any advertising, you know that that doesn't get you very far. We decided to focus on organic Google search. And to do organic Google search right, it takes a long time and it takes patience or you're going to get booted out from Google. So we decided to find out, okay, how can we start to rank for terms like compare car insurance, cheap car insurance, all of those different terms. And we put the work in, and we were patient with it, and we were diligent with it. And over time, we started to see that momentum. And so now we're in a beautiful place where we say, OK, so SEO has taken us so far, but what's our goal? Our goal is to be the first place that consumers come to when they have a personal financial decision to make. So that means displacing the banks. Because right now, by default, consumers just go to the bank when they have a decision to make. So we're asking them to take that extra step to come to our site first and compare before they go to the bank. Just like if they're doing a flight or a hotel, they go to Expedia first. But to do that, we're going to need much more than SEO. So we said, OK, we better do some marketing. And what we said to ourselves are, we don't want to raise any money to do this marketing. So we need to only use the cash that we have in the bank. So we need to be really careful about how we invest it. And we've, we've learned a lot about, <laughs> about advertising through it because we've realized that when you do this advertising, it's really important to test all of the different sources. So whether you're doing display advertising, so banner ads, versus AdWords, versus Facebook advertising, versus Yahoo, versus radio ads, because we've tried them all, each of them are very different in two ways. So firstly, each of them have a very, very different cost per acquisition. So some of them are going to cost you a lot more, and some of them are going to cost you a lot less. But you also have to look at the quality of leads that they generate. Because the way that we make money is a person comes to our site, they fill out, let's say, a car insurance form, and we take that information and we sell that lead to an insurance company. And that insurance company pays us whether the consumer actually purchases the insurance or not. So it's free for a consumer. But those leads, they have to be a high enough quality that the insurance companies and the banks and the credit card companies will continue to pay us for those. And so what I'd encourage you to do is not just look at the cost per acquisition when you're looking at your different, different advertising channels, but also look at the quality of leads or the quality of the traffic that each of those different channels uh, sends you to. And so it's probably different for each of your different businesses, but I think that's really, really important to look at as well. I see my time's running out. 
appreciate your time. Hopefully that was helpful and look forward to any questions. Uh, yeah, hi, Justin. Great, great presentation. Uh, my name's Steve Vanston. Just a question. You sell the lead, so you must, based on the information they provide, you've got an algorithm that says, here's your best option or here's several best options. Choose among them and will uh, the consumers ultimately realize they're, they are becoming a lead as they're providing this information, I presume. Yeah, absolutely. So what we are doing is we're comparing the market for free for a consumer. So from a car insurance perspective, for instance, instead of having to call multiple brokers and in insurance to see how much it would cost to get car insurance from each of them, you take five minutes, you input your information, we compare the market for you, and we show you a list of 20 different insurance companies from cheapest to most expensive, and then we pass your information to the company that offered you the cheapest rate. It's completely free for you, and we get paid as lowestrates.ca whether the consumer actually purchases the insurance from that insurance company or not. Are, are you able to get rates below posted from major financial institutions, and if so, how did you convince them to come on and do that with you? So, yes, the answer is yes. In mortgages, what happens in mortgage is most people in Canada walk off, the walk off the street into a major bank and take the posted rate or a rate that's slightly lower. But for people who know and who compare, you can get a much, much lower rate. So I don't know what the posted rate right now is for, for you know, if you look at the Royal Bank, but if on our site you can get you know, a five-year variable rate mortgage for 1.74%. So that's almost prime minus one. And that's a lot less than what's being posted uh, by the Royal Bank or by TD or any of those. Now, the, the, ma the, ro the major banks don't post their best rate, the rate you can actually get on our site. And the reason is because there's still so many people that are just walking off the street into the banks taking rates that are higher than they need to be. And until there's a tipping point, until more than, and sorry, I said 70% in the UK. In Canada, only 7% of the population or 8% have ever used a site like ours. So until that gets to 30 to 40%, until people stop walking into the bank branch and taking the first offer, they're never gonna offer their best rate. So what happens is mortgage brokers come on our site and mortgage brokers have access to over 30 different lenders, including some of the major banks, as well as these things called monoline lenders, which are lenders that lend only through brokers, and they can offer lower rates than people are getting through the major banks that way. But I would, I would love it if the major banks would come on our site and offer their best rates as well, but there's no point for them to do that yet because it would cannibalize all the business where they just, w with people walking off the street who don't know any better. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate consumers that, hey, there is a better way, and you can literally save thousands of dollars if you just take five minutes to do some research. So in your opinion, what differentiates lowest rates compared to other players doing similar ser or offering a similar service in Canada? Right. Well. Firstly, I don't, we're not trying to differentiate ourselves from people who do what we do because we feel like we want more companies to do what we do because the biggest issue is that Canadians just don't use lowestrates.ca or any of our competitor sites. Only 8% of the population have ever used sites like ours. So we don't view our competitors or our obstacles to success as people who do what we do. We view our competitors and obstacles to success as the banks because people are just continuing to go to the bank blindly without seeing what else is out there. So we're trying to, we, we embrace other people who are doing what we're doing, and we want to encourage education and empowerment for consumers because no one in Canada know, very few people in Canada know about personal finance. The government doesn't teach it, schools don't teach it, and so we, we embrace what our competitors are doing. Yeah, here. Uh down here. Hey, sorry. Uh, I'm just coming, moving back from India, and uh, this is a very hot space back there. Uh, in fact, I uh, am building something which is similar to this, and probably I'm in 2013, where you're probably there now. Uh, 
and uh, how do you get over something like uh, a concern of a user that his data is being sold uh, to an insurance company who would probably try to market uh, their products uh, multiple products or cross sell uh, when they are interested in a single product and how their data security is uh, a big concern for them so we have a privacy policy on our site that consumers understand how their data can be used but uh, it's that is something that happens if we are selling a lead to a bank then a bank has the opportunity then to cross sell uh, that consumer, any of their products as well, but the banks have to follow the same Castle regulations and Pipita regulations as we do, and so they all do. That, that's that's not really an issue that that we've that we've come across as being an issue. We don't have many consumers complaining to us saying, "Hey, you took our information and sold it in a way that we don't want to." Thankfully, because we're very careful with consumers' information. Hi, <laughs> it's me. Uh, so is price the only thing you compare against? Like you, you don't look at what the best coverage is, you don't look at you know, what the best fit is for the customer, you, you just go right to price. Sorry, I, I can't see, who asked that question? Can you put your hand up? Me. Oh, hey, sorry. No, that's a really good question because price isn't always what's most important for a consumer based on your unique needs, the second least expensive might be the best of them, or the most expensive might be the best. So that's why in addition to comparing based on price, we also allow people before we supply those prices to put in their circumstances, right? So we ask them questions that hopefully will get them down the path of getting them to the right solution, not necessarily cheapest solution. Having said that, what we also do is we have a ton of educational material on our site that tells people what they need to consider outside of just price. So we write news articles, we write blog articles every single day to tell people and to encourage them to say, okay, this is what you should be thinking about when you're looking for a mortgage. And we also make sure that the companies to whom we send the leads have specialists that can educate the consumers further on, okay, here's some considerations in addition to price that you should think about. So I was very interested in the rate you mentioned, 1.74, <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, what is the cost for transferring mortgages? Is there, or I'm not sure if you can explain if there's consequences on that or? Yeah, there is. I mean, it, it, and it really depends on the situation. If you have a fixed mortgage, if you have a variable mortgage, how much time le is left on your mortgage. All I do in that, those situations is I encourage you to go on the site, find the rate you're interested in, we put you in touch with a specialist, and that specialist will let you know, does it make sense to switch your mortgage or does it not make sense? Because it's difficult, unless I knew your particular situation, to, to give you an answer there. 